Okay, so I don't know where anybody else is, but we can go ahead and get started. Um, if you were able to print off my file, um, mm -hmm. that free response question, pull it out. Regardless, it's all squished together. <laughs> um, so you may wanna have some paper next to you, but I'm gonna pull it up on my iPad so we can, um, so we can work and go um, from there. Okay, I was not able to print it out, so that's fine. I just like look at the screen. And yeah, be fine. Do I need this? No. Okay. Yeah. My sleep schedule is so off. I literally look so tired. Same. And I feel tired too. Like it was good for the first like a couple days and now it's whack. It's like worse than all that school. I'm going to bed at one every night. I mean, I'm going to bed at like eleven, eleven thirty, which is naturally where I would want to be, but I get to get up at seven something instead of five something. So much better. Okay. Um, so as I said, this is a question from 2001. Um, this is a very old format in that not only was the test broken up into section one, the multiple choice, and section two, the free response. The free response was then broken up into two parts. So you can see where it says time, um, time 40 minutes. That's because part B, you had 50 minutes to do as well. It was all different, but you could only use calculator for part A, and now they've thrown away with all of that. So, um, so that being said, uh, this one question, it also used to be the case that the first question on the test was always an equilibrium question. <laughs> so we always knew that was the case. So you knew the first question you got was always going to be equilibrium question. We don't do that anymore. Um, it's, it's more blended in, but there you go. So there are, if I remember correctly, 10 points, let me verify. There are 10 points um, in this question right here. And again, some of them are designed to be easy to get points. So let's start with A, because A is the easier set of points to get from B. And uh, independently right now, you should easily be able to get one because that's just writing the equation. And then it wants solubility in that. And remember, when you see that negative one, that just means slash that, which is molarity. <laughs> right? Uh, and then it wants you to calculate the actual KSP constant. So the bits of information you have up here at the top, you've got a mass, they gave you the formula like I said they would, and you've got a volume. So go from there, do A, one, two, and three. You guys can um, ask me private questions if you want, or you can ask each other out loud questions if you're stuck, whatever. Go. Ms. Baskin, really quickly. Yes. I just had, it was like a, more of like a general question. So I see like, so AG, can it be just like one plus and two plus? No, AG is only ever one plus. Oh, uh, dang, I was tripping. That's probably what stopped me on the homework uh. at one point. Okay, wait, so for number two. Uh-huh. 
it gives us a temperature. So should we be using, and then it gives us mass too. Should we be using MCAT here? No. How, okay, where does the temperature part come in? It doesn't. In? Then what? Okay. <laughs> because because equilibrium changes with temperature, so technically whenever you report a value, you're supposed to say what temperature it was at. Okay.
We go on to B. No, I want to make sure we're fine on A. So if you want to privately tell me what your answers are for two and three, I can tell you if you're right. Call to Miss Baskin. Okay. What if I shaved half my head? I don't know how my angel would feel about that. Yay. By the end of next week, I'm going to be like dying. <laughs> It will be like the longest my hair has been in years. Okay, so I'm just going to write the answers uh, over here off to the side really fast, even though people have been sending me their answers. Um, so for this first one, uh, it was AGCL solid making AG plus plus CL minus. They did not take off um, if you didn't put the uh, aqueous and stuff in here, but you have to have the charges. Um, and yeah, so the charges are necessary. So if you have that equation, that's a point. Um, the next one was actually worth two points. The first point was uh, for converting the grams to moles. And then the second point was turning it into actual molarity. So um, it should have been uh, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 7 moles divided by the 0 0.100 liters, which would give you the 6.2 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. So that's where that came from. Um, again, one point for figuring out the moles and then one point for getting the final molarity. Then for the KSP, since this value here was the concentration of that and of that, right? Because it was this and there's all just one, one, ones there. That means the KSP uh, was basically just 6.2 times 10 to the negative six squared. Uh, which was 3.8 times 10 to the negative 11. No unit on there whatsoever. So that's four points worth of stuff in the top out of a 10 point question. So that's cool. So for part B, one of the things I do want to point out, Nala, you notice how they said that this was at 10 degrees? Mm -hmm. These are at 25. It's the same compound, but the KSP value is different. 
So they yeah. had to do it at a different temperature because otherwise they'd be giving you the answer here for this question up here. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of what it is. So do we, how would that affect how we calculate it? It doesn't. It just has different numbers? Yep. Okay. And it should make sense that if you are at a colder temperature, you're going to dissolve more or less? Uh, less. Less. And sure enough, 3.8 times 10 to the negative 11 is smaller than 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10. You do have less up here. So, okay. So for this next question, um, we've got two different compounds, right? So we now have the PBCL2 and that KSP, the AGCL and that KSP. Note the difference between the two here and then there's only a one of them there that's gonna factor in. So the first question is, will a precipitate form? So what is your comparison? What do you have to compare when the question is, will a precipitate form? USP and KSP. QSP and KSP. So you are comparing these two in this problem. You've got the KSPs up here. Um, so what is going to make your solid in this bottom portion? Uh, P, P, B, C, L. P, B, and the C, L. So remember, that is your M1, all right? Volumes are additive. That means it's telling you to add them together to get your V2, right? So that's M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Go from there. Um, and then the next one, calculate the concentration of this. If you add this much there, all right? So that is, again, that next kind of problem we did. All right, these are basically all from 4.4, right? This was the first kind of problem we did in 4.4, the QSP. This was the second kind of problem we did where you are solving for one of the ions. Um, and then number three, you have to use a little bit more brain power, but not too much. You're trying to see which one will precipitate first. So again, these are going progressively more difficult is the idea. Um, you should have already banked four points at the top and then see how many points you can get at the bottom. Um, and I will write those values up. So part one is worth three points. Two is one point and three is two points.
forgot. We can keep it in milliliters, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Is that I'm already halfway through it? So, Miss Baskin? Yes. For number two, that's like the ice table problem. You don't even have to do an ice table for number two. Listen, I don't understand, but it's okay. I'll figure it out. No, no, no. You've got the concept. It's, it's easier than that. It's asking you for PB, and they've given you a way to get CL. You have the KSP at the top. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, period. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Did I write down the whole? Thank you. 
Hey, Miss Bass, can I have a question? Yeah. For number one, what's the like, KSP value? We find like like we found the QSP value, but where's it's at the top. I underlined it. And we do um we do oh. square the mo we do square the molarity for um for the chlorine. Yes. Yeah, for the chlorine, right? Yep. Yeah. For one and two, yeah, that comes yeah. into play. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want me to check their QSP? For um, one? Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me type it. Oh, that was, I had a question about that because like based on, it was like my calculator didn't give me enough sig figs, I think, but I don't know if it matters. Same. Yeah. yeah, no, just add a, add a zero after the decimal point. Oh, wrong. Right. I think that's it. Right. <gasps> okay, Ms. Baskin, I think the term equilibrium value is messing me up. What is, is that KSP? It's concentration. It's the concentration. Concent okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. All right. So while you guys are working on two and three, I'll put the work up for number one really fast.
Did I hiccup? <laughs> so for number two, you're simply plugging in those values into the KSP expression. So for question number one, they assigned one point for getting these two concentrations, one point for calculating the QSP, and then one point for saying that no solid forms. For part two, they simply awarded one point for the correct answer. So that's eight points so far. And then the last part is number three. Um, so there's no real way to like practice a problem like number three. It's just kind of, it's just kind of a thing that's out there. So scroll up and take this space down here. So the way to approach number three is it wants to know which one will precipitate first. So you've got the silver chloride and you've got the lead chloride you have concentrations for um, the lead and you've got the concentrations for the silver and you are basically adding the chloride drop by drop and you're trying to see which one is gonna make a solid first. So the way to look at it is to do a side-by-side -side comparison, PBCL2 and the AGCL. So for both of them, you have the KSP, right? So the PBCL, um, that KSP value is the 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I know my concentration of lead here is 0 0.150. And what I don't know is how much chlorine is required to make that solid. And then likewise on the AGCL, I've got the KSP value from the top, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10. And I've got a concentration of the AG, which is the 0 0.120. And I don't know how much chloride is needed to make a precipitate there. So you can solve for both of these for the chloride ion and say, okay, how much chloride is needed 
to make a solid. So if you do that for the PBCL2, you get this number. 1.0 times 10 to the negative second. And if you do it for the chloride, you get 1.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. So if it wants to know which one will precipitate first, I am adding it slowly. So think drop by drop. So looking at these two values, which one is going to make a solid first? AGCL. The AGCL, because it barely requires any, right? So barely any chloride needed to make a solid. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I approached it wrong. Right? This is actually a large amount mm -hmm. of chloride. So I need a lot more chlorine to make the lead actually make a solid. I need a small amount of chlorine to make the AG make a solid. Mm -hmm. So here they were assigning uh, one point to get those concentrations and then one point to make the correct determination. So a lot of people get the concentrations, but then make the opposite designation. See, my thing was, Ms. Baskin, I looked at like all the molarity values and I thought I was looking to find, cause I remember you said earlier, based on like the homework, like when you're looking at KSP, it's like one has a larger negative mm -hmm. exponent. So I was like, okay, so I have all these molarities. I can basically plug them in. So I was like, if they're coming from like the same thing. So I was like, oh, I'll use like the numbers they gave me and solve for KSP. And then, but I didn't realize, I read, I read ahead too fast. I didn't realize they had already given me KSP. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that's different about what you're saying there is that all of that chloride is not there to begin with. Mm, okay. So it's it is a slightly different situation. Um, okay. okay. Oh, I see what you're saying because it was like they were adding all right. of that chloride into it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's it. If you um, on that weekly plan at the very very bottom, I do include uh, the link to. Um, the official scoring guide, which has sample student answers and greater feedback about what it is that they're looking for um, to be able to um, to be able to assign points and that sort of stuff. So that's all there if you want to look. Um, I'm pretty free today in the afternoon if you are getting stuck with anything on 4.4 .4 and you want to bug me and send me screenshots, that's fine. Um, otherwise, you guys have office hours tomorrow morning. Um, if you are not in uh, attached to my class in AP Classroom yet, which I think everybody is, go ahead and get attached to my class. Um, I made a solubility quiz in AP Classroom. It is uh, two portions of free response questions and I think 12 multiple choice or something. I'm gonna let everybody use a calculator on it, um, but I did set a time of one hour to take it once you start it. Um, so Friday morning, we'll just go over, make sure everybody can see it. I set it to open at 9.30 on Friday morning um, and be closed, I think 24 hours later or whatever, um, so that you can, you can get it done. And uh, also I know AP Classroom has been super glitchy for everybody. So that way, if you don't have a, a, a good enough, um, or if your internet connection is being drained too much during the day, you can take it Friday, you can take it some other later time um, like that. But that's, um, that's all I know. That's where we're going. That's it. Okay. Okay. <sighs> All right, well. so...